Well, hello, Patrick. Leonardo, how are you doing? I'm great. I'm very happy that we can have this chat together, talking about uh, the origin and the history of the Oxygen Advantage. Yeah, it's, it'll be it'll be an interesting part. It's a it's a part that say it meandered quite a bit, and sometimes it went two steps backwards and one step forward. But uh, we we got there in the end. It just took twenty years to, for it to happen. Yeah, twenty years, two two decades. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'm quite lucky to be a uh, part of the Oxygen Advantage today, one of the master instructors, and uh, having the chance to talk with you, Patrick, about breathing and uh, and uh, talking about the breath revolution. And uh, I wanted to, with this talk together, quickly to explain how is your story with the, with the breathing and why you got interested into breathing, first of all, and your story with Buteyko and, and uh, all of mm. this. So I, it stems back to when I was a kid growing up. And as a kid growing up, I had asthma. I was diagnosed with asthma when I was about four years of age. But I would have had symptoms before that, but doctors traditionally wouldn't diagnose. It was called chronic bronchitis or something when I was a very young child. So it was always something there. And then into my teenage years, in primary school, which is junior school, up to the age of 11 years of age, I was quite bright and... There was myself and another guy. We were well up there at the top of the class. And in secondary school, high school, I went from the top of the class pretty much to the bottom of the class. So something happened when I was 11 years of age um, or 12 years of age or in around those years. And I had asthma, of course, which was, was always there, but I was also progressively tired. And I never realized the connection between a breathing problem and how it can impact your sleep, but also how it can impact your concentration. So anyway, I left school at 14, never to go back. And I decided after one year, I was working at 14 years of age as a trainee shop manager in a shop that I'd worked part-time since I was 11. So it wasn't that I was leaving school to do nothing, but I felt just that the academic route wasn't for me. But I went back to school at 15 years of age and I was always kind of driven and for the final exams in high school, I really put a lot of work into it. And I got the points to get into university and I worked my way through university and I got my degree. I got my degree in business economics and social studies from a university in Dublin called Trinity College in Dublin. And I graduated in 97. However, the one thing that was always stuck with me all throughout my teenage years into my early student years was sleep disorder breathing, fatigue, poor concentration, racing mind, and poor breathing. So then I went into the corporate world and you go into the corporate world and physiologically you're sleepy and you're not focused and you're a little, little bit highly strung. Stress levels were high. And then I read a newspaper article um, and it's going back, I suppose, yeah, 1998, I never know the precise dates, but I read a newspaper article and then I came across something similar again and it was about the importance of breathing through the nose and breathing light. And it was about the work of this Russian doctor called Konstantin Buteyko. And he had worked during the Soviet space race. And part, part of his task was um, looking at ideal composition of oxygen or air for astronauts going up into space. Now, he was involved with other things as well. An interesting guy because the CIA had a file on him, which was released relatively recently. And himself and another scientist that the CIA were convinced that they were making quite significant inroads on ESP, extra sensory perception. So this was an intelligent doctor who questioned the link between breathing and health. And when I read that article, which said about breathing through the nose and breathing light, it stuck with me because I was doing none of those things. In actual fact, I thought it was good to take these full big breaths because that's what I was hearing. That's what I was being told, even back then. Like I, I remember going into a university, into an exam. I was stressed going into the exam. I took a walk for three or four, four minutes before the exam. And I took these full big breaths because I believed at that time that I would have more oxygen going to my brain. And I went into the exam hall and I was totally spaced out. And I can still remember that to this day. And can you imagine trying to do a three hour exam and my head was all over the place. Now, I was already a faster breather, a, an upper chest breather. And of course, that would be increased sympathetic drive or stress response. So physiologically, my body was always in that. 
And I remember measuring my resting pulse rate when I started doing the Buteco method back in well, whatever. It was 80 beats per minute. That was my resting pulse rate. So you knew there was something going on there. And of course, as a youngster, I didn't really know all that much, to, you know. Um, I did the nose unblocking exercise. I was able to unblock my nose. I knew there was something in it. And, you know, because this was the first time I could start breathing through the nose. It took a bit of work, but got there. I practiced breathing less air. So doing the opposite to what I was being told, I followed the Buteyko method, breathe less. So I, I sat down, slowed down my breathing, took less air into my body, and I started feeling the temperature of my hands increasing. I always had cold hands and feet. And again, pointed that there was something going on with this, put it into practice and wore tape on my mouth that night, used breathe right, breathe right strips to open up my nose. And I taped my mouth with this stuff here, three and one inch micropore tape. First morning, I don't really remember a whole lot um, of a difference. Second morning I woke up, it was the best night's sleep in 15 years. Now, I was still in the corporal world. I was practicing it for myself, bringing my attention onto my breathing. And I have to say, the change was phenomenal very, very quickly. But I probably was somebody that really needs it. And when I needed it most, the information came to me. So I decided then I was driving from one, country, one side of the country to the other that I would like to train in this method. So I decided to change careers. And I just felt I had a good feeling, intuition, or I don't know what you could call it, but it felt right. And I decided that weekend, I would drove across the country on Friday and I knew on Monday that I was changing careers. So I contacted the Russian embassy because I had no way of, I knew nobody from Russia. So I said, the only people who were going to know Buteyko is the people who were at the Russian embassy. So I rang them and I asked them, could they track down this doctor in Moscow? And they did. And they got me his telephone number and I rang him and one person answered in Russian and then somebody else was able to speak English and I spoke to them in English and I arranged for her to go over. So that was it. That was 2002. And that I came back to Ireland, worked mainly with asthma. Got a few great breaks here and there, wonderful breaks. You know, I started up on the 17th of March, 2002, St. Patrick's Day, just by coincidence. Mm -hmm. I had my father's Jeep. I put in the filing cabinets from, from the Jeep into the office and uh, put the, the pictures up on the walls. And that was my launch day. So going into a business, no capital, no background. Um, it was totally madness. But then again, I suppose, you know, you're young and you can take these chances. I didn't have a mortgage. I didn't have a car at the time. I didn't have major expenses. So I knew, though, that this definitely worked and it had helped me significantly. And a journalist wrote an article about it in the local newspaper. And she got my first three clients. That was in the Galway Advertiser. And then 2004, 2005, the Irish media really got on board. The Irish Independent, the Irish Times, Sylvia Thompson, Kevin Murphy writing articles about it. And it, it really progressed. So it went from primarily working with people with asthma, hundreds of kids and adults with asthma, and seeing really, really, really good results. To then I started seeing that these people, their sleep was getting better. So what was happening there? So I started looking at sleep. Then I started looking at craniofacial development with children. And um, we were already teaching kids anyway, but I didn't realize the significance of mouth breathing and how it can affect the, the formation of the jaws and development of the face and the child's cognitive ability. And then in 2010, I started giving courses on mindfulness and Buteyko method. So I called it the Buteyko mindfulness method because I felt that mindfulness wasn't enough. Like, you know, I think mindfulness is wonderful, but I also learned a lot during that time. I had 3,000 people doing small workshops coming in, two-hour workshops, just to introduce them. And I found that when I asked them about mindfulness, quite a few of them, you know, maybe 5 or 10%, but out of 3,000, it's, it's quite a few people, had tried mindfulness. But none of them, or very few of them, were sticking with it. And these people were attending with anxiety and panic disorder. So here's the very group that need mindfulness the most, but yet they couldn't do it. And that's why functional breathing. Um, and I made plenty of mistakes. I put people into panic attacks. I never realized that the feeling of suffocation would have such a profound effect on them. And it, but it just, you know, of course I made mistakes, but the mistakes were, there weren't nothing kind of, you know, 
of course, the person felt pretty lousy for probably an hour or two, but we were able then to back back off. And it was that tweaking it and tweaking it and tweaking it. And here, Leo, you know, the question about oxygen advantage, how did it arise? It arose specifically out of the experience of teaching mindfulness and buteco. About, I don't know the precise amount, but hardly any men ever attended the training. Mm. So you can imagine 2010, Ireland was in a state of chaos. Many people were unemployed. Houses had devalued literally overnight by 50%. People's fortunes were wiped out due to incompetent government, due to the European Central Bank. Um, we have no you know, um, flexibility with our interest rates or in terms of managing our own economy. So the EU, you know, it, it wasn't particularly helpful because I suppose, but then again, I can't blame anything like that, but there was a series of consequences that caused a lot of anxiety and even suicide here. And yet men were not t attending the breathing, yeah. functional breathing. They didn't attend when I had the word mindfulness in and they didn't attend with, with the Buteco method. So I said, we really need to have a breathing program that was targeted at men. And it was a performance breathing program. And that's what the oxygen advantage. So I started off, I started writing the book in 2011, 2012, when I was in Copenhagen, doing the initial research, pulling it together. And I kept writing it. I wrote 60,000 words. And then I had one client, I was teaching a lot by Skype back then. And I had one client that went into a dental surgery in California, picked up another one of my books called Close Your Mouth. And the client rang me up and his name was Doug Abrams. And, uh, I was working with him and then he said, well, he's a book agent. And I said, well, that's great because I'm just writing a book specifically at this moment. And I sent him what I had written and he's a book agent for Richard Branson and for um, Nelson Mandela and Bishop Tutu and really high profile book agent. So he told me, I sent him the 60,000 words and he told me, he says, too scientific you have to go back to the drawing board he says i need you to write this as if you're talking to some guy down the pub okay so i was thinking here's one irish man to another or to an i can only imagine being down the pub talking in how would you explain it and i had to rewrite the whole sixty thousand words which i did but it, the whole thing took me about four years put it out there penguin books and uh, harper collins it went to auction and Penguin Books. No, sorry, it was actually HarperCollins. HarperCollins had the winning bid. So it went out and now it's going into 14, 15 languages. And it's been really, you know, great in terms of getting it out there. And I have to say it was a bit slow at the beginning, which is fine. It, it wasn't one of these honeymoon books that kind of goes up <laughs> and then dips. And it was a nice slow progression. And tipping away, you know, putting out training courses in the back of the book for both Buteco and for, for Oxygen Advantage. And the last two years have absolutely been phenomenal, absolutely been mind blowing in terms of the part of, you know, where it's going and the interest in breathing now. Yeah. And I still think we're still at early stages that it's the adopters, it's the innovators. And when I'm looking at this, if somebody was going to say to me, you're going to be teaching breathing exercises to elite police officers, which I am, to going to another country, training an air force, different squadrons, um, having instructors trained in the oxygen advantage who are also instructors with the Navy SEALs, but also the Delta forces. So it's really been amazing. And having some of our instructor SWAT personnel, Joey Williams, for example. And then if you look at sports, if you look at the business world, so we still are at early stages, but what seems to have happened is that the military have taken it on first. And probably that's not a surprise because if you think of all of the innovations, even the stuff that we use in everyday life, often of often they have stemmed from the military and breathing alters states. I brought so. uh, the breathing to the, the special forces um, in Italy and to the elite um, teams uh, on sport in France, yes. they yes. are they're getting so much interest in the in the effect of breathing on their performance, mental and physical. So yes. it was it was just so evident for them to get trained to with the breathing. Yes. Yeah. And it's amazing because 
it's going to lift it for for absolutely everybody. But it makes sense, Leo, because you know about altering states, you know, if whether we want to upregulate or downregulate or get better sleep. And I think the application is so deep. And I suppose we really need to be taking breathing into the public domain and to make it accessible to everybody, which it is. And also we can tailor it, whether it's a, a young child coming in to an 80 year old man or woman coming in to an elite athlete. Um, that we can tailor breathing exercise to suit the health, the breathing pattern of that individual. Absolutely. And yeah. it's looking at breathing in a depth from both the biochemical, biomechanical, and also resonance frequency point of view, and then using breath holes and hyperventilation techniques, which we're now using um, in, the, in, for example, in the book, The Breathing Cure, to alter states. So it's all good. It's really all changing. It's all good. What yes. you did is amazing because 20 years ago, I think very few people were interested in the power of breathing. I think scientifics and, and yogi. Yes. Uh, that was it. And then, of course, people pra practicing apnea, um, breath holds, and, and diving. Yes. Of course, they, they, they were interested in it, but the general public <laughs> didn't really get much interest. And what you did after having uh, met Buteiko and uh, having understood that the breathing on yourself had a powerful impact was uh, you were a pioneer in that sense and you you simplified something that was scientifically difficult to understand for normal people so they could try and understand for themselves in a daily life and and i think today in 2021 20 20 years later basically I, I hear so many people that say, of course, I know that breathing is important and now I mm. want to learn how I should properly breathe in yes. and which techniques can help me. So in 20 years, the, there's been a, a big development. And yes. this is what we call the breath revolution. And you, you are a pioneer and uh, you, you brought the, the, the science, the, the learning from Buteiko into application because people need to practice. So of course yes. we need to know about it. We need to be... Uh, aware on how it works inside but then of course we need to practice to have the the benefits and and applic um, and putting this uh, into application in the sport domain is something so logical because mm. sport and endurance is is what we need oxygen so from sport this this uh, this perspective about breathing then you can get a little bit further and it's the mindfulness the mind and it's finally for everyone because Everyone wants more energy. Everyone wants to sleep nicely. Everyone wants to deal with stress. Everyone wants just to have a good physiology yes. and, and a good health. Yep. So it's it yep. so logical. And, uh, and that's the path yes. that you created for the oxygen advantage. And, well, yeah, I great. suppose, look, look, Leo, sometimes life draws you in a certain way. And for me, you know, having fast upper chest breathing and poor sleep, I can always relate back to the poor concentration. In secondary school and i can relate to the difference now i'm almost nearly well 50 not not a couple of years off 50 years of age and this is my new book that i'm writing at the moment because if somebody was to say what are the two traits that you need throughout your lifestyle regardless of whatever endeavor you do whether you're a school kid a university student whether you're in the corporate world whether you're in the police or military or sports you need concentration and you need attention span. And concentration is our ability to hold our attention on one thing. Attention span is the length of time we can hold our attention on one thing. So society demands it, but nobody teaches us how. And I'm going to say that mindfulness is not enough. It's not enough if the person has dysfunctional breathing patterns and poor sleep. You can do all the mindfulness in the world, you still will have lousy concentration if you're not getting that deep sleep. And when I'm talking about deep sleep, I'm having talking about good breathing patterns during sleep, breathing in and out through the nose, light, slow and deep, and also good breathing patterns during wakefulness, breathing in and out through the nose, light, slow and deep, because that calms the mind. So physiologically, we can calm the mind, especially for people who are in that high sympathetic arousal. And it has an application for everybody. Because, Absolutely. you know, if you think of, in terms of the breath, we will say that it influences the major disciplines of medicine and mental health is one of those. But a lot of people will say, well, I don't feel anxiety and panic disorder. I didn't feel it. 
but I had a, I had a racing mind. And if you have a racing mind, it's going to detract for your, from your concentration. So training the brain is just as important as training the body. And training the brain, we can do it via the breath. And of course, by doing breath holding, we can really push the body into states to cause adaptations there. So I think it's great. It's really interesting. And uh, yeah, the, so I was lucky because when I first, I contacted, I'll give you a story. Yes. I contacted the Asthma Society of Ireland in 2003. And I was after having 20 years of asthma or even plus at this point and hospitalizations as well. And I said, so there's something really in this and they weren't interested. And it was absolutely so unfortunate. And to this day, I often wonder why organizations and charitable organizations are not doing justice for their membership and investigating simple things that could help a lot. And the Buteco method for asthma has 20 clinical trials, but yet most asthmatics are not aware of it. They're going around with their mouth open. The kids have their mouth open. They're sleepy. They're more likely to be stressed. And then we think of the anxiety population. So on, on a number of levels, it has got application for health, but it also has an application for performance. So that's, mm -hmm. you know, that's why there is a future in breathing. It's happening. We are doing it. Yes. Uh, you are doing it. We are helping you to do we it. We are all doing it together. Yeah, That's absolutely. why, you know, it's, yeah. it's great. And it's great that there are so, so many authors now writing books about breathing and, uh, yes. and uh, just putting it out there. Breathing is important. Yes. Get yes. to know well, how to we... breathe. And, and that's the first step. First step, get yes. to know how to breathe, how getting interested into it. And then you get, can get specialized in whatever method you want. But the yes. first thing is getting awareness on that. And I really want to thank you for what you have been doing on uh, on breathing because also for me it really changed my my health and the first time i tried buteco uh, i think it was more than 15 20 years ago i don't remember it was absolutely difficult and horrible for me to do it because i didn't know how and this uh, and i didn't understand and i stopped and it took me 20 uh, no 20 15 years to yes. get into understand why it was important and start and start practicing it and really having benefits on my health. Like clearly, I was so much into the sympathetic mode stress that my my immune system, for example, was not working properly, and and some some so many other things. So thank yes, you and given your background, that. because you achieved a lot as well. You were a, a national gymnast, if I can yeah, remember correctly. Yeah, I was I was a national gymnast, and uh, that's part of my things. Um, I was training with the national team, and it, it was amazing. It was my my path, but because of a few problems on health and, and surely uh, my breathing yes. was playing a, a major role. I didn't continue on that. Then I became an engineer. And then after that, uh, now I'm working in, in, in breath work and uh, biohacking and, and sport. But um, when I was a kid, I was mouth breathing, upper chest breathing, uh, and, and I was breathing really fast. Yes. My bolt when I tried was 12 when I was uh, 16. So today, you know, we work, can, can get uh, up to 30, 35, 40, and we yes, feel that yes. actually our body is healthier. So yeah. Quite good. So thanks, Patrick, for, for You're very welcome. on the origins on, of all of these, how you discover the breath, good take, and now the oxygen advantage. And, uh, and uh, I wish uh, a good practice of breathing to everyone that was listening. Absolutely. Pleasure. Thank you, Leo. Thank you. Take care. Bye, Bye Patrick.